Welcome to the VIP Masterclass Series. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is dedicated to a new member uh, whose name is Janelle, and she says the following. Hi, Dr. Wright, would you please do a video on accent? In the video, please demonstrate first, in a certain time signature, say 3-4, how much stronger should the first beat be? And in 4-4, four, four, how strong should the first and third beat be relatively? Second, should all the first beats of every bar be equally accented or only that of the first bar of a phrase be the most accented while others of the rest of the bars be less accented? And third, for the notes marked with an accented sign, either tenuto, um, uh, ac accent, or or marcato, there, there's different ways. So like a line is called tenuto, a little greater than sign uh, means accent or sometimes it means marcato, and then uh, the little vertical accent either means marcato or martellato. Um, uh, should it be stronger than the first note or not? Um, can you explain the theory containing all the time signatures first and then take Sanson's The Swan as an example? Please demonstrate how to produce a smooth and graceful accented sound with effortlessness rather than an unpleasantly hammered one. Looking forward to your video. Thanks a lot and have a great day. So this is a great question because um, there's a lot packed into that. So her first request is to go through with a bar of 3-4. Um, and I'll just take a really famous waltz uh, since everyone in this group has probably or will one day probably play this. So... As you can see, the music always dictates where the accents actually go. So what I mean by that is, yes, it's more, less, less, more, less, less. But you can tell that that second one was less on the melody note because the music overall, the overarching phrase, and then one, two, so I'm not going to kill every one. So to answer your question, Janelle, it really depends on what the music is calling for. Additionally, I would uh, always try to like lean into the first beat, but never strike it like a hammer. Uh, maybe an even better example would be just a couple of or waltzes ahead, opus 69, number two. The first one was opus 64, number two, C sharp minor. This one is the B minor waltz by Chopin. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So left hand is keeping time, and I do think it's a better idea to go a little stronger and then less, less. One, two, three, 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 one, two, ever so slightly doing that because the right hand needs to be shaping the line on its own. Okay, and this uh, waltz actually has those accent marks so I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate with this. I also have pulled out the first Chopin Mazurka uh, to demonstrate with as well with these accents because I want to present a concept with these. Accents, tenutos, all of those things are interpreted by the artist. So an accent doesn't mean play one dynamic level louder. I, a lot of times accents can mean uh, take time, sometimes referred to as an agogic accent. So for instance, maybe I do want to bring this out volume wise a little bit on this first one because that has a little accent and then let it die away. But I'm not gonna do this second one exactly the same and then the third one exactly the same because it sounds uncreative maybe the second one is softer so time time so in Chopin's music I like to interpret those as taking time you can also check out Seymour Bernstein's uh, Bernstein, uh, uh, his book called something like 
interpreting Chopin's symbols. He also refers to crescendo and diminuendo hairpin markings. Hairpins meaning the lines, not the word D-I-M or C-R-E-S-C. Uh, and he often says that like as as a hairpin gets bigger, maybe you take a little bit more time. Um, maybe you do get bigger volume-wise as well. So you always have to interpret these things. Remember that accents are a form of articulation. It's a form of articulating a note, just like I might articulate something in a sentence. So it should always be taken in the mental vein that oh, I'm going to enhance the music with this. Same thing with ornaments. A lot of people, yes, you should learn all the rules. Like, oh, a trill um, in the Baroque era starts on the, the note above. But sometimes, maybe it starts on the principal note if it has a melodic line that helps it. That's just a random example that I can think of to where it's good to know the rules, but then you always have to do what serves the music the most. There are numerous examples in Schumann's music where he writes. Thank you so much for watching. I've listed two links in the description below. One of them is to download this full video that you've just watched the sample for. The other is to view the entire library of VIP Masterclass series videos. I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.